This is Ryan Elliott for Boxing Social and Association with Betfred. Like we're joined by Chris Two Slick Congo. Chris, been a busy time for you. We'll, we'll come on to your exciting news. Firstly, how are you, mate? How was Christmas? Yeah. All good. Christmas was wonderful. Happy New Year to you and your family. But um, yeah, I'm all good, man. That's good to hear. Uh, thank you for your well wishes. Now, let's come on to it. Uh, the press release came flying out yesterday. You have signed a multi-fight promotional deal with Boxer. Congratulations on that. How did that all come about? Thank you. Um, that will come about through, obviously, they, I think they uh, got through to their team and stuff and uh, put their interests out. And then, yeah, man, the deal was good. So we took it with both hands. Now, in terms of what they're doing and the, the regular shows they're going to have on Sky, they're going to have plenty of dates for you. At times in your mm -hmm. career, inactivity has been a bit of a killer. Going into the McKinson fight, you'd only had like one fight within about a two-year period, just about. Mm -hmm. How much of a yeah. weight is it off your mind knowing there's going to be regular dates now and you've got that backing? Oh, it's great, man. Like I always said, um, the best times of my career, it's only been one year, which was 2017, and I had five fights and even though they weren't against great opponents, but I could you could just see the improvements and, and everything I was learning in the gym was just coming off um, in the ring. And it was just great. And when, when I was active, I was enjoying it more and stuff. So, yeah, man, it's, 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 it's good to know that I got this activity back and this is all I needed. And I know now um, it, it, it's just going to be a up from here. Mm. Sky remain an absolute promotional juggernaut when it comes to boxing. They've got you there now. You're going to be out regularly. How much of a sort of mental lift is it for you in the gym, knowing that you're going to be promoted with them? They're going to make you into a star, and it's, it's just on you now to, to make it happen and to keep winning. Uh, it's great because it's, it's always on me, and I'm always the one that's always staying in the gym, always working. So now it's uh, time for me to get get what I deserve, the big platform and actually stay there and actually have multiple fights on there. And now I can actually show what's really been going on. So all, now it's great because all the times I have been in the gym worrying about if I'm, when I'm going to get a date, what's happening next. Now we can just all flourish now and, and it can happen. When you're in that place, Chris, as you have as many fighters have been, particularly during the pandemic, when you, you're kind of just working away and you don't really know when you're going to be fighting, what's going on at all, how hard is it in that place to, to keep on going? Can you kind of explain that a little bit? Uh, it's very hard because just remember, we're the, we're the guys we get paid from boxing. Um, don't really have that many sponsors, so I'm having to juggle working plus having to stay in a gym as well, just in case we never know one day you could get that phone call, you know? And if you're not ready, that's an opportunity missed. And I never wanted to ever miss out on an opportunity. So that that's the reason why I always stayed in the gym. But it was always hard mentally to keep pushing as hard as, as, hard as you can for you to, at the end of the week, say that, oh, I've got four weeks left until the fight night, or for you to have nothing, you know? So it's, it's, it's a mental push. We know your ultimate goal is to be up there at world level, competing for world titles. In terms of getting going this year, though, what kind of level do you want to be at in the, in the first few months? Uh, to be honest, it, it, it don't matter to me. Whatever my pro promotional team got planned, um, then I'm, I'm ready to go. I just want to be active and, and have the fights, man, whether it's British, European or world. I know I can compete at either one, so I, I'm just ready to go. Chris, naturally, when you align yourself with a promoter and with a broadcaster, people are already starting to look. Who else around that way is, is under the same banner? I saw a little bit of noise already on social media. People say maybe Chris Congo and Josh Kelly one day. That's a brilliant all-British fight. Is that a fight that interests you? 100%. That's a fight that interests me. Um, I, I'll be willing to, to, to take that fight whenever it, it comes. Um, we've both been sort of inactive, only having one fight this year. So hopefully he can get his his career back on back on the path, and I'll get my career back on my path. And you never know; we could meet down down the line. I don't know if he's gonna fully compete at um uh at is it uh light middle? He said he's gonna he's gonna come back at light middle. So I don't know if he's gonna fully compete there or if he's gonna come down. But if he wishes to come down, he needs to come and see me. I found it interesting the the press release as well um, on the back of the McKinson fight. 
you them words there kind of were what you said similar to Michael McKinson at some point he's going to have to come and see me again is it in the back of your mind that that one day we will see the rematch is that something you want to put put right uh it's to be honest it's it's anything I'm I'm up for anything like I said I would love to get the rematch I I know he wouldn't want the rematch but let's see um I know really and truly it was down to experience that lost me the fight because he, he had been active even on the small hall scene he was active. I, I, was, I wasn't even active on the small hall shows. So I, I know it was down to that and I know it was down to be me being a bit, a bit too impatient at times. But it is what it is. He won the fight and if the rematch comes, it comes, but it's not in the back of my mind. I've got bigger things to do and to try and get to the top. You are, of course, working with Ben Davison now. Um, I was hoping you could tell us a bit about that. How did that come about? And what was it about Ben that kind of stuck with you and made you want to work with him as well? Uh, yeah, we, we joined now um, ever since we come back from Vegas when Josh won the undisputed title. And um, what made me join was just his methods of training, just the drills, the drills and drills that we done and together, me and Josh, which actually come about in the fight. So when you see the two knockdowns that happened in the fight, that was due to the methods of training that we've been doing in the gym. And just the repetitions and stuff is just exactly what I needed, um, what I believe I needed for my career. So I, I, when I called Ben and asked him um, to be my coach, I, I was really pleased that he took me in with both hands. And we're, we're working, man. We, we, still ain't, we still ain't there yet, man. Give us... Give us, give us another twelve months together. We'll, we'll be unstoppable, man. You mentioned that there as well. Josh Taylor, someone you know incredibly well. Uh, not only in that camp for Ramirez, but for a long time, you and Josh have been doing rounds yeah. together and preparing for fights together. What's it like to be sort of around him full time now? And can you try and explain to people what that working relationship is like between you two? Oh, it's great. It's great. Um, we we've been sparring for years, and now being part of the same team. It's just actually great, man. Like, I get to watch him train literally every day, more time. And, um, yeah, he gives me tips during sparring as well. So it's, so it's all good, man. You can't, get, you can't get anything better than having an undisputed champ in camp, in, in a training camp when you're there as well, you know? So I, I can't complain. What's the blend of personalities like in that gym at the minute? Because you've got world champions, you mentioned there, the undisputed champion, Josh Taylor. You've got Lee Wood around, but a lot of young, hungry fighters coming up as well. Alongside yourself, you've got like the McCormacks in there, Mark Dickinson, Lee McGregor, all kinds of people. What's it like? It's great. Just so everyone bounces off each other. We work together, we push each other, we do drills together, um, running together, strength and conditioning together. And it's, it's just great, man. And us as a team, like I said, I believe we're the best team in the UK, if not the UK, the world, yeah? And we're, we're going to prove that. And we're already, we're already proving that now. As you see last year with, with what the fighters won, it's great for the team, you know? Chris, I was speaking to Lee McGregor a bit earlier today, actually, and he was telling me, aside from the fact everybody gets on well, there is a bit of a competitive nature sometimes with circuits, with sprints. It does naturally want to to push you on. Is that something you feel as well? Hundred percent. We all we all we all want to be world champions at the end of the day. So us pushing each other like that is only going to help us and benefit us. And then when we're in the change room on fight night, we'll remind each other that look, remember we was pushing each other in the gym. This is the time now. So um, yes, yeah, it's it's, it's, it's got to be done, man. It's got to be done. Friendly competition. We're talking about Josh there. He's obviously got this fight with Jack Carroll coming up. We saw so many upsets last year where fighters were maybe making other plans and thinking about other things. Tifimo Lopez comes to mind. You know, Josh doesn't seem like that kind of guy. How is he looking ahead of this fight? Uh, he's the same, Josh. Um, even with all the belts, he hasn't changed. Um, he's still working in the gym like he hasn't got any belts, to be honest. And it's just, it's just great to see, you know. It's great to see even... It was his birthday the other day. We went for a meal, and the next day we was in the gym together. So it's great, man. Just a couple more fights I wanted to get your thoughts on before I let you go, Chris. Uh, Calm Brook finally happening. Better late than never. 
Better late than never. Um, as you can see, it was a sold out event. Um, even I'm still trying to get some tickets, man. I think I need to call Ben and, and say, look, I, I need a couple of them tickets. I need to be ringside. So um, it's a good fight. I see Khan using his speed, but also um, Kel has got the power. But um, can he handle the speed? You know what I mean? But at the end of the day, timing beats speed. So if Kel can time Khan, I believe he wins. But uh, me personally, I, I got Kel Brook winning this fight. I know even the fighters included would have probably wanted this fight years ago when, when both men were at their peak, so to speak. Do you think it's still as intriguing as ever, though, given we don't really know how much both guys have got left? True. Well, it shows people are still intrigued for the fight to be sold out. You know what I mean? Within how many minutes, you know? So as you can see there, people are still interested in this fight, even though they're in the latter stages of their careers. It's still a big fight in the UK, so it can't go wrong, you know? And one more fight that Errol Spence kind of alluded to is coming in April. Uh, we're expecting a three-belt unification between Spence and Ugas. Spence sort of said that is in the works now. How do you see that fight playing out, Chris? Uh, it all depends what, what Spence we see. You know, we've had, he's had all these injuries, car crash. Even though he looked good in his last fight, we don't know with time if it's going to affect him or not. So um, we'll see. I believe Spence, Spence is the bigger man, stronger guy. Um, but Ugas, I, I, I watched a little clip of him against Southwards and he's very good fighting Southwards. So it will be a tricky fight. But for me, I'm going with Spence. All right, Chris, uh, thank you for speaking to Boxing Social. Congratulations again. And I'm sure I'll speak to you when you've you. got some concrete fight news. No problem. Thank you, man.